Hi, my name is Paul Jenkins. I'm a product manager in Oracle Cloud Infrastructure, Containers and Kubernetes Services. Hello, today we're going to talk about multi-cloud Kubernetes lifecycle management. And we're going to cover a few subjects in the background and some of the things that's going on in this area. So we're going to look at some of the trends in the industries, uh, multi-cloud being one of them, uh, containers and Kubernetes being um, a very common way of running applications and bringing these two together and seeing and just discussing, looking at some of the challenges that this, this brings and then talking about a potential solution to these challenges called Cluster API. We're going to look at some of the background concepts of Cluster API, why people might use it in sample use case, uh, how we've implemented this on Oracle Cloud Infrastructure and going through a little overview of creating clusters on OCI using Cluster API and how we can use templates to make things like deploying clusters more consistent and using them to be able to upgrade clusters. And then we'll take a recap of what we've covered. So multi-cloud, these days, the vast majority of organizations that have got a cloud strategy have a multi-cloud strategy that is using more than one cloud supplier. So the reasons for this are, are varied, but predominantly the prime reason is to avoid lock into one supplier and to have flexibility um, to use the services that may be more appropriate on one cloud than the other. So it could be that the database service on Oracle Cloud is far superior than uh, the equivalent on AWS, for example. It could be that you want to be able to take advantages of different pricing for the similar services. Or it could be uh, that you, interest, you have to have multi-cloud suppliers because you've got a particular regional country that you want to have either for data residency or for latency, you want to have a cloud region in that country and your existing cloud supplier doesn't supply that country. So therefore you're forced to make a kind of a multi-cloud choice because there's no other way. And as organizations are moving to the cloud, moving applications to the cloud, containers and Kubernetes have gone from something that just kind of leading edge companies do to being mainstream then everybody is using containers and kubernetes containers really come to the fore when you've got an existing on-premises application that you either want to redevelop or you just want to move from your data center into into the cloud because you can take the application you can put it in a container and then you can run it on premises initially, and you can take that same container and, and run it in the cloud. Once you've got that, then you've got, you open up to the possibilities of redeveloping that or expanding that application using modern uh, application techniques like microservices. But as we get more containers running, we need to be able to manage them and we need to know to orchestrate those uh, containers. And this is where Kubernetes and Kubernetes clusters uh, are the de facto standard in this area. So we can take uh, existing application and easily deploy it and manage it in the cloud. So when we look at multi-cloud and Kubernetes together, we come to the possibility of being able to deploy applications to mul multiple clouds to make use of the facilities that we talked about before, whether it's residency or cost performance, whatever. But what happens then is that, say I've, I'm not ever gonna have one Kubernetes cluster. So even if I only had one supplier, I'd be having at least a dev test, a QA in a production uh, cluster. And if I've got OCI and AWS, then I've got those multi-clusters in multi-clouds. And the problem that that brings is that in order for me to create and manage those clusters, 
I need to know how to do that on OCR and I need how to do that on uh, AWS. So what that means is I've got to understand different APIs, different command line interfaces. I've got to understand different consoles if I'm going to use the console. I need to understand the differences in the infrastructure. So I need to understand the OCI security context and AWS security context. I need to understand what a virtual cloud network in OCI looks like and what a VPC in AWS looks like. So what I'm doing is actually creating two sets of skills and two sets of knowledge in infrastructure that I need to do to be able to manage that. So that makes it more expensive and it adds a lot of complexity and a lot of requirements on skills in order to do that. So this is just kind of a recognized uh, issue and there's a project part of Kubernetes called Cluster API. Uh, and within the overall Kubernetes project, Cluster API has been set up to provide declarative APIs in order to provision, upgrade, and operate multiple Kubernetes clusters. So what it's trying to do is to abstract the infrastructure away from Kubernetes cluster management. So that me as a Kubernetes admin, I can concentrate on managing my clusters and not have to not having to worry about the, the infrastructure required in order to, to run that. So I can set up a cluster from scratch on OCI using the same commands as I would do if I wanted to set up a cluster and the infrastructure on AWS using that abstracted API uh, in cluster API. So that means that there is a cluster API implementation for each cloud. So there's a cluster API implementation for OCI, and there's one for AWS, there's one for uh, Azure, Google, et cetera, et cetera. There's about 22 or 23 different clouds on there at the moment. So this is getting um, real adoption in, in, in the industry and is providing real good value when it comes to managing these clusters. So what is Cluster API conceptually? Well, it uses the concept of using Kubernetes to manage Kubernetes in the same way that Kubernetes manages application deployments by making sure and reconciling that an application deployment is it in its desired state. So there's the right number of replicas, it's got the right number of nodes, etc. And if anything goes wrong, Kubernetes reconciles that and will get back to that right uh, desired state. So we're using the same concepts for managing and creating Kubernetes clusters themselves. So what we do is we start with a Kubernetes cluster, just a plain old Kubernetes cluster. And then what we need to do is we need to basically install cluster API for a provider on that cluster and create what we call a management cluster. So simplistically, a command is saying, basically initialize this cluster for infrastructure, Oracle Cloud infrastructure. So we apply that command, it installs cluster API for OCI on that and creates a management cluster. So there we can start to use that management cluster to create our workload clusters that we want to actually run our applications on. So what we do is we start with a, a specification. So we specify in a file what we want that, map, that workload cluster to work like. So how many nodes work in those would it have, what kind of shape the compute will be. And we apply that to the management cluster and that management cluster will use that definition to go ahead and create workload clusters on the infrastructure provided. So we'll create a cluster that will become a management cluster that will deploy onto OCI. It's possible to have 
multiple suppliers in one management cluster, but the kind of accepted practice is that you will have one management cluster per provider and use that to manage clusters locally on that, that provider. So what's an example use case? An example use case is when products such as Tanzu Kubernetes Grid or TKG will manage clusters, manage and monitor clusters on different clouds. So they themselves will use cluster API to create clusters on OCI and AWS and, and Azure. So what does that give them? It means that they have a defined interface and defined API for each provider. So it makes it much easier there. So if they want to have a, a new support, a new cloud platform, then if it's got cluster API, then it's a very easy to plug that into that, that platform, it makes it cheaper and quicker for them to respond to customer needs. And the end user that's using Tanzu Kubernetes Grid just uses that um, and is abstracted even further away from uh, from the actual underlying in infrastructure. So that's a, 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 an implementation that um, is a good example of the sorts of things Cluster API users would use. So what we've done uh, is we've worked with the wider Cluster API community and developed a Cluster API provider for OCI. It's called CAP OCI in short. And that is basically combining the simplicity of Cluster API with benefits, some of the benefits of, of running on, on OCI. So it's, it's open. It's all built on open source. Uh, it's built on Kubernetes. Uh, the, the GitHub repo is there, so anybody can go and take a look and see the work that's, that's going on. It's integrated with OCI, so it's integrated natively with the CI security policies. It's na integrated natively with OCI services like networking, um, storage, and compute, for example. And it allows you control of cluster configuration. So you can use things called templates uh, that make it easy to define different flavors of uh, cluster. So you could say, right, all developers will be able to spin up a cluster to do unit testing, and it's going to be this big. It's be a tiny little cluster that they can just use to build, test. Or you say, this is the kind of cluster that will be a QA cluster, and all our production clusters are, are this kind of shape. But it's also flexible in that you can do things like public-private clusters, so you can create clusters that the public, you know, external applications uh, are exposed, or you can have completely private ones that they're only accessible by um, your on-premise staff, for example. But also flexible in that it supports a huge range of compute shapes, so that you could have shapes that are suitable for running big AI or machine learning workloads, or you can have very small nodes that are just running simple stateless applications. So it's quite flexible uh, in, in how you can deploy your workload clusters. So there's a number of ways of using cluster API to create clusters on OCI. There's using a local management cluster, something we call bootstrap and pivot, and using an existing managed service like OKE to run a, a management cluster. So the local management cluster route is a way of easy setup and testing. Uh, it's not what you would use for any production workload. So if you were doing it this way, you'd use something like uh, Kind or Ranch Desktop to create a local cluster. You could do some configuration for OCI authentication, install cluster API on that local system, and then you've got a management cluster that you can work, you can use to deploy onto um, OCI, which is great for testing and exploration. But in order to have 
a production environment, you need a, a highly available production grade Kubernetes cluster to be that, that management cluster. And this is where we get to bootstrap and pivot. And this is kind of the accepted way of installing uh, a production ready management cluster. It starts off in a similar way that you, you create um, a local cluster, but that concept becomes a, a bootstrap cluster. So you go through the same process, you create a local management cluster, you use that to create a workload cluster on OCI, and then you install cluster API on that workload cluster, and then that becomes a management cluster in OCI. So you create a highly available with three or more control plane nodes and three or more uh, workload nodes. So there you've created a, a production environment. Or another simple way of doing it is using a managed service like OKE, which is fully uh, highly available. And we just install cluster API in that, and that becomes the uh, highly available production level. Management cluster. So what does that actually mean? Um, it means that if we're going to use something like uh, OKE's management cluster, then we have a tenancy that's in a region. We've already created a cluster and made it a management cluster. So that resides in a VCN, in a compartment. And then in order to create a cluster that the, from the management cluster, then all we need is a target compartment to, to point it to. And then it's simply a case of issuing a command against that management cluster. Cluster cut will generate cluster, cluster name. And that will then create the infrastructure in that target compartment. It will create the cloud network. It will create security list, et cetera. And it will create a workload cluster as we've specified it. The cool thing about that is that we've issued that command against the management cluster running on OCI, and we've created a workload cluster on OCI. That same command could be run against the management cluster running on Azure and deploy a, a similar cluster on, on Azure. So that's when this abstraction to a, to a separate API that's consistent across platforms starts to really make this task of creating and managing um, clusters a lot more consistent and a lot easier across clouds. So by default, on OCI, when we say create a cluster of this shape, cluster API will go to that target compartment. It will create a virtual cloud network. It will create four subnets on that. One for the Kubernetes API endpoint that we use to access the cluster. It will produce a load balancer subnet, which will be used to, when we expose applications and services from the cluster, it will expose them as load balancers in that subnet. It will produce a private control plane subnet. So this is where the Kubernetes control plane nodes will, will live, and it will create um, a private subnet for the actual worker nodes of that, that cluster. And depending on the size of the cluster that you create, you can spread the control plane and the worker nodes across different um, availability lines or fault domains, depending on which region uh, you're working in. And then it will also create internet gateway to get uh, internet access into the API endpoint. It will produce a NAT gateway so that the private subnets can have access out to get um, updates, for example. And it will provide a service gateway in order to get access to other OCI services like uh, database and storage, for example. So just by using cluster API, and saying, create me a cluster of this size, I don't have to understand anything about 
the cloud networking, the security lists, anything like that. I just be it, I just let cluster API do all that definition creation, and I just get a working cluster at the end of it. So we mentioned about templates, and it allows you to create consistency in your um, clusters. So we can see here is an example of a definition of the control plane shapes for a cluster. So that's saying that I want this shape, this compute shape, which is VM standard E4 flex, and I want them to be one OCPU. And that's the shape and the compute and the size. So I can say that all my test clusters are going to be this, this shape. So we've got recipe, we've got flavors that we can uh, create different clusters by just having different templates. It makes it very easy to have pre-configured clusters that uh, developers or whoever can just go away and create and not worry about the underlying infrastructure. But it is able to um, be overridden. So say I want a particular cluster that's going to handle um, a workload, specific workload. So I can create a standard kind of control plane Kubernetes control plane with a fairly innocuous shape, but I could there create the worker nodes on a different shape. So I could have a standard control plane, but I want to use this cluster to run machine learning. So I want to run uh, with GPU shapes. So I can do that. I can, I can override the standard template if required to do that. And that's how you get lots of flexibility in, in, uh, in how you can deploy these, these clusters. And templates can also be used to upgrade clusters. So say I want to upgrade from 123 to 124. I can use templates to make that easy for me. So the, the step is to prepare a new template, copy an existing machine template, make some changes. Um, part of the upgrade, uh, we want uh, to run 123 to 124. So I need to have a, an image, a, com a compute image that's capable of running 124. So typically we use the Kubernetes image builder product project to create a new image. And we'll apply that new template to the management cluster. Then in order to initiate the upgrade, I need to tell the management cluster to apply that changes to uh, each cluster. So I create a small patch file that says, this is a new template name and the new Kubernetes version is 124.1. With just a simple command to apply that patch. And then a roll in upgrade will be automatically by default uh, created and executed to upgrade Kubernetes across all the worker nodes and across all the, the clusters. And the cool thing about that, again, is that that is the same process for each cloud su supplier. So it's the same approach, whether it's OCI, whether it's AWS, whether it's, uh, it's Azure. So it makes the whole lifecycle management issue of multiple clusters on multiple clouds, a lot simpler, a lot less onerous, and therefore uh, much more efficient. So in summary, managing multiple clusters on multi multiple clouds is kind of difficult. But using cluster API makes it a lot easier by providing a consistent interface and tooling across each provider. So it's a cons consistent way that, I, that you interact with it. We can use templates for consistency um, and also flexibility as well by having the ability to override. We're extracting the complexity of having to understand different cloud infrastructures away from what I want to do as a Kubernetes administrator. It is actually manage the lifecycle of my clusters. 
and it makes managing upgrades of the clusters a lot easier by just having to do some configuration changes and not having to worry about having to create new instances, having to get them upgraded manually, upgrade that from 123 to 124, et cetera. And it makes the whole process much more straightforward and easier. And that wraps things up. And thank you very much.